My name is Reverend Don Lewis. I'm a Wiccan archpriest. And interestingly enough, tonight is the 33rd anniversary of my initiation as a Wiccan priest. And to, to me, my being here tonight is, is what, what I would call an omen. Uh, because it's very significant to me that I should be doing a seance on that date. When I did not seek the seance out, it sought me. Um, and I'm very happy to be here. And I really take this to me as a bit of a, a comment from spirit to remember where the center of one's spirituality is. In the tradition I belong to, working with the spirits, working with the beloved uh, ancestors is very important. And what I'm going to do is as I go forward, I, I work with spirit guides. And the messages that I get are, are basically translated for me by the guides from your guides and from the spirits who are around you. My principal guide is my grandmother. And uh, I am going to start with a, with a brief prayer in a moment, but I want to tell you first a little bit about how I'm going to do it. If I have a message for you, if spirit indicates there is one, I'm going to ask you if I can come to you. And it's your choice to say yes or no. You don't have to get the message. But if you want it, when I ask if I may come to you, please say, come, and I will give you the message. Often the messages will be very visual when I receive them, and so I may be describing symbology, which may have no meaning to me, but might mean something to you. Or other times I'll know what it means. Sometimes also it will be words. Uh, it really varies with the person. And I'm going to, uh, just going to take a moment now to attune. Beloved ancestors, beloved spirits, Divine Mother, Father, God, we ask you to be with us this night, to open the doors of communication, to let only those who are good and of the light come forward, and to help them to give clear and accurate words. Beloved ones, with love and with respect, we bid you welcome. And if I appear to be staring at you while I'm doing this, I'm not really staring at you. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to see beyond you. May I come to you? I don't necessarily know what I'm going to say before I see it. And this is really very much like feeling your way through pea soup. So, I beg your pardon if it's a little halting as it comes forward. I'm seeing a number of spirits around you. And I'm seeing these spirits around you in a protective sense. I, I feel like they are there. They feel that you need protection for some reason. I don't know if you do, but they feel that you do. And they want you to know that they are there if you need them to help you. If there's something that you're particularly worried about, know that these people are here for you. There are about five of them. And I don't really see their individual identities, but they're almost like a wall around you. And they're, they're behind you. It, it's like they're guarding, they're guarding your back. And they want you to know, they want you to know that a door is about to open for you in approximately 30 days from this date. On the other side of this door, I'm seeing the color yellow, which to me represents happiness. I don't really know what this is in relation to, but it's an opening that's going to change the circumstances around you. And it has to do with this issue of protection. And as so I say, it's approximately within 30 days, but approximately 30 days from now, it, it, it's an opening, it's a door opening, it's an opportunity that's going to come to you. And when this comes, you should, you, you, should, you should take it, or at least very seriously consider it, because it really is the answer to something you'll be wanting. Do you have any questions you'd like to ask? Okay, you don't have to. Let me see if I can get, get a little bit more about this door. On the other side of the door, I'm seeing like a river, and river, rivers represent two things. They represent moving forward. They also can represent emotion. 
This river is moving forward, but it's winding a little bit. And what, what, I'm, what I'm taking that to mean is that as you go forward through the next year, you're going to be moving forward toward the things that you desire and the things that you're focused on, but you're going to feel kind of like, kind of like you're, you're wandering a little bit. But you really aren't. You're, going, you're, you're, you're headed in the right direction, but you're going to feel at times that you're a little bit lost. And that's when you want to remember again that you have these protectors, who are not only there to protect you, but they will also guide you. And if it seems like you're a little off the path you should be on, I don't think you actually will be, but remember that they're there to help you to go forward. Thank you. Can I come to you? You may take me a moment. This would be your left side. I, I sometimes confuse right and left. I'm seeing a figure over your left shoulder. It's not the only figure around you, but in particular I see this figure. And it's a woman. But it's very, very interesting because she's dressed like a bride. And I have no idea why she's dressed as a bride, but she is dressed as a bride. And I don't normally get brides. Um, I don't know that you knew this woman in life, but she's your, uh, one of your guides. I don't normally get names, but she's telling me that her name begins with an A. So, I give you an A. <laughs> um, she is holding a book. She's holding flowers. And I'm going to take that to mean that, that she's around you to impart knowledge, and also to help with joy. She doesn't look very joyful herself. <laughs> I don't know why. Uh, but she's there to help you to have joy. And I feel like in her life, many things that gave her pleasure were held back from her. Perhaps she was afraid of them. In fact, she was afraid of them. She was afraid, maybe, maybe had help to be afraid, of the things that she really desired to do. It, it's the, and I, I would say that she was living probably maybe a hundred years ago, maybe more than that, when people's lives were more circumscribed by convention. And I feel that she felt very held back in many ways. And she doesn't want you to feel held back. I'm not suggesting that you do, but she's there to help you I mean, you've seen the kind of races where the horse jumps over the little, little uh, steeple fence. That's what she wants you to do. She wants you to leap over any barriers that are in front of you. And that's what she's there to help you to do. And if, if you find yourself feeling like you're facing a barrier, ask her to help lift you over it, to help you to see to jump over it. Now, now that now they're showing me like a wall, made of Legos. And why Legos, I don't know. Except that Legos are really pretty insubstantial. And I'm taking this perhaps to represent that barrier that she's speaking of, or, or those barriers, as being insubstantial barriers, but they may look substantial. Now they're showing me money. <laughs> and I don't know what that means, except I'm assuming it's on the other side of the barrier. And I'm going to say, as, I, as, I'm, as I'm looking at her, I'm going to say we're talking about approximately eight, an 18 month period in which you may face certain barriers that may be holding you back from what you really want to do, particularly perhaps in a, in a business situation or in a way that has something to do with money for you. And that when you come to these barriers, you must not let them stop you. It's very important that they not stop you, but that you go over them. There's also a man, and the man is standing on your right. And this man is not very tall, or at least he doesn't seem to so compared to the woman. Uh, he seems like an older gentleman. He seems very quiet. And I have no idea, well, I guess he'll tell me. So I shouldn't say I have no idea. I should just shut up and let him talk. He's dressed in blue. He has a mustache. And now he's holding a bell. And bells, to me, often represent cleansing. And so I would say, again, that he has to do with the overcoming of obstacles, the cleansing of any, any kind of blockage. Although he doesn't seem to want to talk. <laughs> but since, since they've shown me the bell, I would say that's what he's there for. And do you have any questions you'd like to ask? Okay. Thank you. May I come to you? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Could I ask your first name? It's Amy. Okay, I don't know why I'm asking your first name, okay. but I was motivated to do so. And I'm going to tell you what I'm seeing around you. But it strikes me as very odd that I'm seeing it. The spirit that I'm seeing almost directly behind you is Aztec, with the big feathered headdress. And you don't look Aztec to me. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't mean that you might not have a spirit guide from that background. Mm -hmm. And, you know, everybody has several guides. But this, this figure behind you, and it might also, not, might also be that it's not a guide but a message. And we'll see how it, how it plays out. But I'm seeing him, I'm seeing him as a dancer in a ceremonial dance. And, and there's a, a, a ceremonial feel that they're dancing in. And now they have little dogs around the edge of the field. Which, the Aztecs did have dogs, but I don't think that's why they're there. To me, dogs are a symbol of happiness. And the dancing is a symbol of manifestation. And I want to say, Actually, I want to say that right now, not, not right this moment, but right now in your life, you're manifesting something that is very important to you, that you're building something. Uh, if it's not right now, it's the right coming up on it. And you're building it out of your spirit. Your emotions may be involved, your mind may be involved, but it's your spirit that is really driving you. And this is very good, because when things come from spirit, they come well. And I want to say that this, this is not only going to be very good for you, in that it's going to do what you want it to do and what you're doing what you're doing with the intention of, but also it's going to bring through other things from, from, from your higher self, from your inner spirit. Almost like a bit of a floodgate. And I hope that you I hope you want that. <laughs> but that, that's what they're telling me. It, it, it's almost like a floodgate of memories. Though that doesn't necessarily mean you'll get like conscious past life memories but knowledge, information, things that have been held back so far in this life from previous existences are being opened by this situation. And, you know, the last couple of people we spoke to, we were talking a year, we were talking 18 months. We're not talking that in this case. We're talking right now. <laughs> uh, very, very near future. And can I ask you do, you, do you do psychic work yourself? I don't, no. Okay. I don't, I don't know what to say to that, except that, that I feel like you, like you have a great deal of ability, whether, whether you work with it or not. And this has a lot to do with that. And actually, I want, I want to say to you that I feel like you pick up a lot from other people psychically that you may not know you're picking up. And if you find that's a problem, you, you, should, you should work with grounding your energy and other forms of shielding that will help you with that. But I feel like you can pick up other people's emotions, other people's, other people's bad moods, things like this really easily. <laughs> and that's a pain. <laughs> um, it helps with my job, though. <laughs> well, in that case, it's good. Yeah. But you want to be able to shut it off when you want to. Mm -hmm. But I feel like as this thing is manifested, it's going to bring you a much higher level of psychic ability even if you're not consciously working with it, it will come through in other ways. Mm -hmm. Do you have any questions? I think so. Thank you. Well, I'm not done. <laughs> <laughs> Over your left shoulder is another figure. And I don't necessarily always know why they appear to me in the particular form they are. Sometimes it has relevance to the person, sometimes it doesn't. And a guide can really take whatever form is necessary for the moment. For example, with the Aztec, I don't know that that's a guy. I think that may, may have just been part of the message. And this, this is another figure, almost, almost, almost stereotypical, but they do that sometimes. This is a nun. And she's a little nun. Well, no, she doesn't like that. <laughs> she's a fine nun. Um, very old style habit. And I don't know what to say about her, except that she's there. But I feel, I feel that what, what caused her to reveal herself was we were talking about, about grounding energy and that, that picking up of emotions. And I feel like she perhaps has some, some, something to do with that ability or with the, con the possible control of that ability. So if you find you're having trouble with it, she might be who you would want to speak to. And in terms of her name, or the names of any of these guides, if you wanted to know the name, the best thing for you to do is to ask them. Because okay. <laughs> they don't necessarily want to tell me. <laughs> um, but if you ask her, it will come to you. It might come in a dream. It might just come as a knowing. 
Thank you. Thank you. The balloons are really interesting. <laughs> Just as in previous messages, I don't know where it's going to take us. <laughs> so we're going, to, we're going to start with the image that I see, and it will unfold. And don't take this literally. It's not meant literally. But I'm seeing doctors and nurses around you. And what I take that to mean is a kind of emotional cleansing. And I want to say to you that you either are already in or you're about to enter into a period of, of, of addressing emotional issues that you may have carried and releasing them. And the reason I'm seeing the, the doctors and nurses around you, I'm going to take that to be your guides being there to help you with this. And it's like a flushing out of your system. You may not even know that you're carrying this, but it, 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 it's like issues that have built up that need to be released. And when this starts, if it hasn't already started, it may have already started, but I don't think it's going to be because you decide to do it or because you do anything to start it, it's just going to seem to start. <laughs> and in fact, it may have been going on for a while before you even catch it. But it'll be very good for you. And it'll be very freeing for you. But the, the, un the, the other thing I have to say about it is that as you go through this process, you may reevaluate the things that you desire. And you may find that some things you've really, really wanted don't necessarily do it for you anymore. <laughs> and other things you never thought about may become very important to you, or that you did think about and put aside. And it may be that you start picking up certain things that were once important to you, but which you perhaps haven't thought of for a while. And what I want to say is that over the course of the next few months, first you'll be releasing these emotions, but then you'll be opening to new possibilities. Except, I, again, I feel that although these, although these are new, they're old at the same time. They're things that once drew you, that you perhaps stepped aside from. <coughs> now, they're showing, they're sh well, I'll say it because they gave it to me. <laughs> they're, sh they're showing a crown on your head, which again is not literal. But it's saying that as you go through this, this process, you're going to be coming much more into sovereignty in your own life. And that's not to say you don't have sovereignty now. You always have sovereignty. But you're going to feel I guess, I guess I'd say more in control than you've felt perhaps in a while. And if you already feel in control, then it will be more so. But, but really that you are the mistress of your own fate. And you will see the cause and effect between your decisions and your fate very quickly. Well, that's an ominous thing to say, isn't it? <laughs> I didn't mean it that way. <laughs> what, what, what I mean is that when, when, when you decide to do something, it will go forward quickly. Do you have any questions? They're not done. <laughs> I'm seeing an image over your left shoulder. And when it's the left shoulder, it usually indicates something spiritual. And they're showing a stoplight, which is probably the strangest thing I've seen over a shoulder so far. <laughs> I shouldn't say a stoplight, it's a traffic light, because it's going back and forth between red and green. And what I'm taking this to mean is that you're coming up on, on a point when you're going to get the green light. And things will move forward. You know, maybe even suddenly. It may even feel very sudden to you in some ways, but it's going to move forward. And it's almost like there's been a red light, but the green light is flashing now. So there you go. Thank you. May I come to you? Me? Yeah, you. <laughs> if you don't mind. It may take a moment. 
Hopefully Kyle's going to make that. Okay, I'm, I'll, I'll tell you what I see, because once I start seeing it, it's time to go. <laughs> um, they're showing me photographs around, like old photographs like you would see in an old house, with heavy wooden frames. I don't know who the people are, I don't think it really matters. I, don't, I think it's the fact that there being photographs that are important. I don't know why they're showing them, but hopefully they will tell us. Um, I, I, I believe that I'm going to interpret with this. As being, as being issues of the past coming into your present. But in this case, I don't feel like, like it's an emotional thing at all. I feel like it's almost that you may be working with the past. And perhaps like a historian or an author or something where you're working with past events and bringing them into a modern context. And I have no idea exactly what that means, but I give it to you because they're showing it to me. Now they're showing me potted plants. And the potted plants are under the photographs, which was actually a fairly common thing in, in, in houses about 100 years ago. Uh, but I'm taking the plants to represent life. And I'm going to say that you're going to take the, these, these older events and breathe life into them in some way. And again, I don't, I don't specifically know what, but it, it, it's a very creative process, whatever it is, and it's, it's going to really fire your creativity. And, and, and do you have any questions? Okay. I see some. I, I, I see spirits around you. I'm going to tell you about them, but I don't know that they have anything more to say. But since I see them, I'm going to mention them. There's a woman over your left shoulder. That, that, that left shoulder that keeps propping up. And I want to say two men toward the right. And the two men are pretty nondescript, although I suppose I shouldn't say that. They won't like that. But they're, they're pretty ordinary looking spirits. They, they look like they could have lived any time in the last 100, 150 years and been OK. The woman, though, is very distinctive. And she is dressed in what's either a Russian garment or a pinafore of the sort that you might have seen before the Second World War. It, it's a very distinctive square-necked um, garment over a white blouse. And her hair is parted in the center. And I don't really know what else to say about her. <laughs> uh, except that she's very maternal in, in her attitude toward you. She, she is, again, a very protective spirit. And she's showing herself for that reason. And I also want to say she has to do with creativity. And that one of the reasons she's come forward is we were talking for a moment about creativity. And I feel like, I feel like the issue of creativity is going to be very important in your life during the next year. And I don't know if you do a lot with creativity now, but you will if you don't. <laughs> and if you do, you'll be doing more. Thank you. May I come to you, Ken Dracula? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to assume you're not really Ken Dracula. No. I didn't think so. Because that would be a really interesting reading. <laughs> I'm going to start by just telling you what I see, as, as I've been doing, and then hopefully it will unfold in my way. It's going to unfold fast. Okay. I'm seeing a spirit over your left shoulder. And they, they seem to have a penchant for left shoulders this evening. This, I'm seeing again a woman. This woman is in the nature of a school teacher specifically a school teacher. And she even looks like a school teacher. She's kind of, kind of tall and a little severe. But I don't think she necessarily would be in person. But she is there. It's almost like she's laying down the law about something, but not necessarily to you, but perhaps as a part of her personality. She, she is very structure. Now, on this side, on the right, they're showing me not another spirit, but shelves, almost like bookshelves. And since we, we started with a school teacher, bookshelves seem like a reasonable conclusion. But I don't really see what's on the shelves. I just see the structure.
And what I'm, what I'm going to take from that, but this may have more meaning to you than it has to me, because I'm, I'm just trying to feel my way. But what I'm going to take from that is that, that you are, are, are in some way or another concerned with structure. Perhaps not in the terms of actually physically building, but in terms of how things are organized. And it may be that you're, you're going to become involved in organizing something, but I, I feel like this is almost, almost more an informal type of organization, more, more just, how can I put it? Pulling things together for their best use and, and, and putting them in alignment so that they're organized and functional. And yeah, that's what she wants to say. <laughs> She's putting her ruler down. <laughs> uh, uh, sometimes, sometimes they're funny. Um, but what, what I want to say to you is that you're going to be very much involved in organizing something, again, almost immediately. This is not a far future thing. This is, this is a fairly near future. And not necessarily as like the head of it, but as the person who's making it work. And I'm going to, going to say that whatever this is right now is not working. Whatever it is, is it may be beautiful, it may be highly cared about, but it, it's buckling, and it needs to be restructured. And that's what they're saying, that you, you will restructure. And I don't have a clue on earth what it is, but I, within the next few months, you're going to find that a major concern. Do you have any questions I can speak to? No. Okay, thank you. You're very welcome. Who else can I pick on? And I have too many pockets. I just want to check the time so that I don't. What time did we start at? Uh, 9.05. I mean, what time, I'm sorry, what time did I start? Oh, um, 9.50, I think I ended up at 9.50. Okay. So we're 20 to, 20, 20 to 30 minutes in. So we have probably about, probably about another 15 minutes. Well, thank you. Thank you. May I come to you? So may I take a moment? And this may be one of the stranger images that we've had. But I'm seeing fish around here. And fish represent emotion, and sometimes they represent wisdom, but it's the kind of wisdom that comes from the heart as opposed to from the head. And I'm seeing these fish, it's like they're, it's, they want to go out in all directions. They don't want to be held back. And I don't know what would be holding them back. And maybe they're not actually held back, maybe they're just afraid of being held back, but they're wanting to go out to the whole world. And I want to take that to mean that you have something to say to the world that comes from your heart, and this will be of help to the people who hear it. And so what I would say to you is that as you go forward, speak this truth however, however, with whatever tools you have, and do not worry about how people are going to receive it, because you will be led to the people who need it. And it could be just people you talk to, or it could be in the form of something like a book. Very good. It, it's very much what you're meant to be doing, and it's going to go very well for you. Is there anything else I can tell you? Any way you want. I don't think I, I can answer, but you can ask. Absolutely. There's something I've been invited to apply for, and I very much like to get it, mm -hmm. but you can't get it before you apply, if you know what you <laughs> You have to allow the process to follow. Mm -hmm. So what do, you, what do you think they're in a business model? What's the Is the question, <coughs> should you apply for it? Oh, no, no. Or, or will it come to you? Will it manifest? I think that it will. I've been invited to apply. I think that it will. I would, I would highly recommend following through on that. There are worse things in the world. <laughs> I, really, I really feel that what you're working on is going to be very successful for you. 
No, I won't. <laughs> but when, when you have the truth that is coming to you from spirit, it won't leave you alone. And you know, you could, you could, you can move to China, and you'll still end up writing, writing what you need to write, saying what you need to say, because spirit wants you to say it. But on the other hand, it can come in its own time. It's not like you have to do it tomorrow. So set it aside for a while if you need to, but it won't stay aside very long. It will come back. <laughs> well, the fish isn't a guide. The fish is a message. I'm not seeing your guides especially clearly, but I am seeing a woman around you. She's an older woman, not elderly, but but fifties or sixties, I would say. Maybe maybe a little little more than that, but not not an old person. But it's like she doesn't want to come forward for me for some reason. I don't know why. I see her. Well, she's coming forward a little now. She's, and she's, you know, they might, they might be doing trick or treat tonight. I don't know, because she's got a costume, too. Um, but it may be symbolic of her role in your life. Because she's dressed, it's not the first time we've had a nurse tonight, but she's dressed as a nurse. But she's dressed as a nurse from World War I. It's a very particular look. Uh, the, the headdress is almost like a nun, but it's different. And I don't think that that's necessarily what she was, but it's what she's saying, that, that she's here to nurture, and she's here Well, the, the word I'm getting is to serve. And her face is very distinctive in that as I say, she's not really an old person, but she's lying, as if she's careworn. And I would say she looks older than she actually is. I don't really get a name, but I, they don't usually give me names. But if you feel like, it, it, if, if you want to know her name, talk to, talk to her, begin to talk to her yourself, and she will give it to you. Uh, it may come in a dream, it may come, just come to you, or she may send it to you as a sign. But if, if, you, if, you want, if you want her name, she will give it to you, but she doesn't want to give it to me. Let me sit down. <laughs> She's not six feet, <laughs> but she, she, she's fairly tall. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> she is about, about yay tall. So, guides aren't always people that we've known. Which could be someone you know from a past life, but she is there for you. <coughs> Thank you. I come to you. Yes. And again, if I seem to be staring at you, I'm not really staring at you. I'm trying, trying to see clearly what they're trying to show me. one of prosperity. And what they want to say to you, they're, they're showing me signs of stability and prosperity, which I would say you're moving into. And that's not to say that you're not prosperous. I have no idea. <laughs> um, and I feel like this is more 
It's more, more than whatever prosperity you currently enjoy. It's something you would aim for. And they're saying, actually what they're saying is, is that you have an opportunity coming to you. And I think it, I think it may already be there. If it isn't, it's coming, coming within the next two to three weeks. And that you should take it, because it's going to take you to a, a, a much greater prosperity than you currently have. And now they're giving me more things. But I'm not quite sure what to do with them. So I'm going to tell you what they are. <laughs> they may have a meaning for you. Um, or maybe it's just because it's Halloween. <laughs> um, I'm seeing images that refer to, a to the African religion known as Vodun. I don't know if you're familiar with Vodun. More commonly called Voodoo. And what I'm seeing, and they're, they're, they're small, they're not full sized. Um, and I don't really know what to make of that. Ex um, except that I'm, I'm, I think that I would take that to mean that in, in, in the coming year you may find some effect from, from perhaps people who are involved in that background, or from that background itself perhaps in your life. But it's not going to be a major effect. It's like an undercurrent. Yeah, that's a weird one. I don't know what to say. <laughs> Sir, do you have any questions that I can speak to? Yeah, that was, that was an unusual one. <laughs> Can I come to you? Sure. Can I ask your first name? Yeah. Yeah. I'm seeing two things to begin with. I'm seeing columns, um, which to me are a symbol of stability and strength. And I'm taking that as, as saying that you have a great deal of strength, and also that you're using a great deal of strength, which is a good thing. Um, I'm also seeing a woman, and she's kind of, kind of I'm going to say she's directly behind you. She's not really on the right, and she's not really on the left. And this woman, she's an older woman, and I, I would say at least in her 70s, if not older. Her hair is kind of salt and pepper in color. A little more salt than pepper. And she is very, she also has that feeling of strength about her. And she gives you the impression of being someone who could carry any burden that she needed to carry. And this woman wants you to know that she is there to help you with your burdens. And also that she is just there for you if you need her. Um, the other thing that I'm seeing, going back to the columns, the columns themselves are just simple white columns, but it's like a great deal is built on top of them. And I want to say that, that a great deal is built well, this sounds weird, but a great deal is built on top of you, that you're holding a lot up. Uh, and I would say in a, probably in a number of people's lives. And, and that's fine as long as it's what you want to do. Um, I think sometimes people put too much on your shoulders. I mean, that, that's my opinion, and your opinion is the one that counts. But I feel like you're, you're asked to hold an awful lot of weight. And you're capable of it. But I don't know that it's really fair to you that you're asked to do this. And I, I'm going to assume that I'm being given this message just to say, <laughs> just, just to say that you should hold all the weight that you want to hold 
Now, you know, we've gone all night and not had that. Um, but that you should hold all the weight you want to hold. But if, if you start to feel you're holding too much, don't feel bad about putting some of it down. Because that's your right to. And I feel like the people that, that you're supporting in, the, in this sense, don't completely understand what they're asking of you at times. Um, they, I mean, they understand, but they don't. And so, again, I would say, carry the weight you want to carry, but if you feel you need to, to put some of it down, there's nothing wrong with that. And do you have any questions I can speak to? Good. Thank you. They're not done. <laughs> um, I get a lot of things in images, so sometimes they're odd. Like the microphone. <laughs> uh, I'm seeing dogs around here now, and to me a dog is a symbol of happiness. And what I want to say, after that whole thing about, about carrying so much weight, I also want to say there's a lot of happiness coming to you. And it's almost like they're saying, yes, you're carrying a lot of weight, but there are many good things coming into your life as well, many good things undoubtedly already there. And, well, okay. They're, they're showing me a picture of you looking into water. And this is an old way of, of divining the future, uh, to read the reflections on water. And what I want to say from that is that when you, when you go home tonight, think about your life and the things you want in it and the things that maybe you don't want in it. And just kind of tell your higher self, tell Mother, Father, God what you want and what you don't. And then let it come to you. So there we go. Is there, is there anyone who would like a message that we haven't come to yet? May take me a little I say that for every one of them. <laughs> I'm seeing. Are you two together? I mean, it, it, you're, you're friends. I'm, I'm, I'm getting that feeling of protection around you also. And I don't know exactly what that means, but I'm seeing again the guides are almost like a wall behind your back. You could say that. You could absolutely say that. And the, the way they're showing themselves to me behind you, they look as if they're made of stone. Uh, they look like ancient sculptures. But what, that, what I take that to mean is that they're standing very strong behind you. And as you go forward, you want to remember that they're there and to call upon them. If you have a problem, don't try to handle it alone. Ask for help. And I want to say that you sometimes try to handle alone what you could have help for. <laughs> and accept the help. And I feel like you, I feel like you, can I ask your first name? Yeah. Oh, I shouldn't have done that. <laughs> uh, but we'll come back to that. I feel, it's not bad, it's just that the, the, it brings through more and I hadn't finished where I was. Uh, I feel like you sometimes take on more perhaps than you should, or but not so much more than you should, but you try to handle it alone when there are those who would gladly share it with you. And so I think the, na the main thing they would like to say to you at this moment is to accept the help that is there, not only the help of the guides, but of your friends. And do not think of this as a, as a personal weakness or an imposition, but rather as part of the nature of friendship. Now, when we ask, when I ask your name, I, I became aware of a spirit also behind you to the left. They love to be on the left. When they're on the left, it has to do with spiritual issues. No, oh, this is very interesting. They don't normally talk to me about health things. Because they're in spirit now. And what do they care? But this lady, this lady had a heart issue. And she's showing me her heart in great grisly detail. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, I don't know that this was a physical issue, but I don't know that it wasn't. 
But what she what she is saying is that she's here to deal with heart issues in relation to you. And in her life, she perhaps denied her heart in certain ways. And that's what I'm taking that this showing the heart to me. Um, do you have any questions I can take? What do you think that that means for me? Well, when they're there, they have something to help you with, specifically. In this case, since, since they were speaking first about being willing to accept help, um, opening up the heart in relationship to accepting help, I would wonder if perhaps, perhaps, perhaps you fear imposing on others, or, or fear asking too much of others. And in times when you shouldn't, in times when, 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 you, when it would be good to, to pull in that help. And I think that might be what she's saying, to open in that way so that you're not doing everything yourself. Not that you can't, you're more than strong enough to do it yourself, but you don't have to and you can do more if you're bringing in help. Does that make sense to you? Okay. Now, now they're giving you a dog. <laughs> so it, it, it's happy dog night. <laughs> so the dog can use a symbol of happiness. And I think what they want to say is that, that this will bring you greater happiness. Not to say you don't have happiness now, but it will increase your happiness. And of course, they can't stop there. They, they have to go farther out and left field than that. They're, they're showing you the heads on Easter Island. Uh, and why are they showing you the heads on Easter Island? They're beautiful. They're beautiful. I'm going to, to interpret their showing this to say that, that, that you have the strength to stand whatever life brings you as the heads of whether many, many years. But remember that when you're standing alone, the wind is moving all around you and can wear you down. And so it's good to have a head on the other side. <laughs> Thank you. And let me check that time again, so I don't run into Helene's time. 45. Um, I think we can probably do one more person. Can I ask your first name, please? Chris. Okay. Well, I'm going to tell you what I'm getting. But we're way out in left field at the first moment. <laughs> so. Hopefully it will pull itself in as I speak. But what I'm seeing around you are symbols of confinement. And also at the same time, like symbols of adventure. Almost stereotypical symbols. But I'm going to take this to mean that there are certain things that you really want to do in life that you may feel held back from. And In keeping with our costume theme for the evening, I'm seeing I'm seeing a pirate to one side of you. And that may just be because I went to the pirate museum. I don't know. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but I'm going to take it to be a symbol of, of, of an adventurous type of life. And what I want to say to you, because I don't know exactly what they're referring to by that symbol is that there, there, there are certain things that you really would like to do. You would like to reach out and do them, but you hold yourself back. Because inside, you're, you have very mixed feelings about it. And so if there's something that you're trying to do, or have tried to do, or are about to try to do, and it seems like nothing will bring it about, like, like every time it's crossed with something, it's probably because you have mixed feelings about whether you really want it. And the way to deal with that is basically just to talk to yourself and line out how you truly feel. And that will open the door one way or the other. Um, I'm also seeing a number of spirits around you. And I'm seeing a rather unusual, what, what for me is an unusually large number of them. And I would take that to say that on some level, I 
I don't, I, I'm not going to say that you attract them so much as you have a lot of connections into spirit. And I'm not really quite sure what to say about their being there, except that, that, that I see a, a large number of them. If you do any kind of work like this, it could be that. If you don't, it could be, it could be a latent sensitivity that you don't use, but I feel like it's there. And I feel like that, like they, they are drawn to you for some reason. And I don't see a lot of activity among them, but I see them. Do you have any questions I can see? Um, are there relations? Sorry? Are there relations? Some are, but not all. Some of them, some of them are just drawn to you. And I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say that I, I'm going to assume that, that you must you must have some 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 level of, of openness um, because they see it they're they're called to you doesn't mean that that you're going to hear from them but they're called to you and they're not necessarily people that you have known some of them are but some of them are not. And so I wouldn't be surprised if you were to find yourself with experiences with spirits. But if not, I don't know. Is there anything else I can tell you? Thank you. And I think at this point it's probably time for Helene. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.